It is from this reality of a lack of control over these individual segments of the spine that this second issue arises. And that is the fact that the other sections in your lumbar spine that don't have the significant herniated or bulging disc are still going to be relatively in significantly greater levels of health. Therefore, have significantly greater levels of resting stability and stiffness and tension in those ligaments, including the discs, including the other ligamentous structures that hold that spine in its correct place. The reason this is such a problem is because we can't control movement. We All we can do is do this sort of movement. So if all of these ones up here are nice and stiff and appropriately healthy, but this L4-5 segment has a raging herniation, it is a point of instability. It is a weak link in the chain. And therefore, considering the fact that we cannot segmentally move our spine, we can only move its entirety in one way, direction or another. When we do do those sorts of movements, movement will preferentially go through the path of least resistance, which is our herniated disc. A substantially greater movement is going to go through those weakened structures, let alone if this is at speed or with, with a sustained force, we're going to find that we are constantly going to be targeting that same injured segment, baking in more and more instability as we go on. It's also worth noting that, as you guys can see when I move this spine around, the joints hinge on one another, either hinge forwards, backwards, or twist. And what that looks like is this kind of motion here, okay? When we are injured in a particular segment, rather than having this hinging, we often find we get a bit of shearing taking place because the disc isn't held or holding the segment in the right sort of position with that appropriate tension. And it allows a bit of this translation forwards, backwards, or quote unquote wobbliness. A great example of those of you that will experience this firsthand is when you do something like a cobra position. And this immediately, for many people, not everybody, but many, as you arch backwards, instead of hinging backwards, particularly at the L5S1, it shears backward, creating immediate sciatic symptoms or back pain down in the lower back. Now I appreciate that this paints quite a dire picture but it is so important that we actually understand what is happening when we have a herniated disc so that we can effectively understand how the spine works and make more strategic decisions with regards to getting better. So now we know that there is an instability as a result of the injury. We know that the disc works with many of the other ligamentous structures that provide stability to the spine and that now that there is a significant step change in tension at one specific injured segment and that movement is going to preferentially go through there, we can start to evaluate what are going to be the right strategies to move forwards with regards to getting this thing better and allowing it to recover and heal.